it's single. Single, single, single. And statistically, we all black, yeah. but we all single. Girl, right now, right now. I gotta leave and go to a whole new state to find a boyfriend. <laughs> At least she found one. Some of us just. Yeah. But it's tough here in LA, though. Very tough. Tough. I lived in Atlanta forever, too, before LA. Well, Atlanta is it's not existing. I mean, you know. Different How many straight men are in Atlanta? Like three? Uh, <laughs> it's, no, it's three. like. Am I lying? Uh, you're not. No, you're not. And, and all the girls you're are fighting not. for the same three dudes. Yes. That's true. And they're That's true. all Nigerian true. businessmen. <laughs> yes. yes. That are married. <laughs> that are married. Listen. Okay, I know they're joking, but, you know, before we get any further, since they're talking about my city, um, again, you know, it is not, it ain't, it's not that bad. Here in Atlanta, I don't encourage you guys to move to Atlanta, but it's not that bad in Atlanta. It's just like I said, we always talk about who you're picking, and a lot of women, you know, they don't pick well. I mean, and I'm not beating up on the women that are, you know, watching me and stuff like that, but it's like, you know, when I see a lot of these complaints, again, it just goes back, again, to who you're picking. And then you also have to realize, you know, metro Atlanta, downtown Atlanta, I'm not going to lie, it is filled with a lot of, you know, the gay and homosexual community. But again, you don't have to stay there. You don't have to live there. I'm always surprised at how many, you know, black people actually live downtown Atlanta. Um, it costs a lot of money. You're actually not getting the best bang for your buck, yet they still crowd there because that is the city and they're trying to get really close to the city. Anyway, welcome back to the channel. And you see already we have an interesting one today. So let's get into it. I live there. I know. Yes. I'll tell you that. I dated a married right. Nigerian. Did you really? Yeah. How did that go for you? It went very well. It was lucrative. <laughs> yes. 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 That's how they yes. were. They're like, oh, time yes. forward, Celine. Yeah. He said, every time I see you, I will give you a gift. And our first date, he gave me some $2,000 pair of shoes. What no sh I wear because African men don't have good taste. <laughs> Relationship status, single as well? Very, very single. But, you know, I believe, and it's LA. Yes, it is rough. But if you believe, you're gonna have something, it's gonna come when it's supposed to come. 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 Is it rough for black women in LA? Yes. It's tougher, right? I, I don't know if it's tougher. It's you tougher. think it's tougher it's in tougher LA? It's tougher black women who like black men. Now, okay, if you well, like that's, white so men, the, the pool is open. They like ready. That. You gotta find, People for black women, it's like, we gotta employer. find who likes us. And yeah. it's crazy, because mm -hmm. we're amazing, we're desirable, so. Uh. That's why you gotta be an equal opportunity employer. Let everybody, Indian. I don't wanna die on a board. Have you dated an Indian? Okay, so let's stop here. Um, so I, I know, like I said, they're having fun with it, but you know, there's always truth in every little joke um, that is uh, being said. So one of the first things, and you know, for the people that hang out on my channel a lot, you know, I'm always talking about the things that people are looking for, you know, just some of the basic stuff, because it's kind of hard to build an argument if you don't really have anything, you know, to start with. So if you're new, um, here is where we start. So we generally say for women, for women, um, they're generally looking for three things. They're looking for a man who can lead them, a man who is a protector, a man who is a provider. You already saw one lady talking about the Nigerian guy and the fact that he had money. Um, that is that whole provider thing for the men that, you know, they, they're having a little bit more trouble when it comes to the provider piece, you know, of it. I actually have, like I say, resources that I'm putting together. It's called Money Making Mondays. You'll know because you'll see um, a green you know, kind of outline to the thumbnail. And that's just kind of me helping some of the guys to actually build their money up. Because, you know, one of the issues I understand is that money is always going to be an issue, you know, if you're in this dating space. So why argue with it? You know, let's go ahead and just try to solve it. Um, the next thing is we have to start talking about what do men want? And I think this is one of those things that a lot of women don't like to talk about which is they're looking for a beautiful woman as his I see beauty. You know, there's lots of different types of beautiful. That's why I never like to say that one woman is more beautiful than another because some guy might like, you know, the young lady in braids. Somebody else might like the fact that Claudia Jordan has her hair pressed and probably has, you know, some extensions in there. And then you have other people who might actually like the thicker woman because you do have some men that like thicker women. They generally do think thicker women are attractive. Because like I said, all you got to do is you can look at OnlyFans and you'll find men that really want all these different things. So it's, I know sometimes as men, especially in America, we want to actually put all women in one category. But you really can't because there are men out there that will want them. However, that being said, now we have to talk about the real stuff. And we have to start to talk about, okay, why would these women really not be doing well? Anytime a woman places her success over a relationship, that's almost always, especially in our modern society, 
that's going to be a red flag for almost every single man. And I know for me, it is definitely a very strong yellow. And I understand that a lot of women will, you know, argue with me and basically say, well, hey, right now I'm single, so I have to put my relationship first. And I don't even know if you're a good guy. So why in the world should I stop my life for you? Okay, well, that's fine. And I don't have a problem with that. But there are women that when I talk to them, they they actually say these things. See, this is why we talk about communication communication. And it's really important because like I say, I've dated women. I've dated women who were business owners and they have told me that, Hey, I would love to put my business on the back burner. Once I have children, I would love to, you know, be a stay at home mom. I would love to maybe have a small part-time job and actually take care of my family. You know, I've had these conversations with women who have owned their own business. So when I run into a woman who is basically say, I want to be upwardly mobile, I want to basically reach the top you know, of the mountain, I'm not against these women. But what I am saying is those women have to find the men that line up with them. And even when I joke about, you know, my celebrity baby mama, you know, Gabriella Wilson, you know, I'm always even talking about that with her because even though she has money, you know, I know one of my questions would be, OK, how long do you plan to do this? Are you planning to be like a Celine Dion where you're basically going to Vegas and you're basically out there, you know, performing for the next 10 years? Are you going to take a hiatus or, you know, how are you planning to actually build up, you know, our lives? You know, are you going to take a break for 20 years so we can have these kids and then go back? See, all these things are different choices and depending upon her choices, I am going to make the decision whether or not to date her. And see, a lot of women, they don't come into the conversation saying things like, oh, yeah, I have this great career, but, you know, that's not as important to me as a family. And see, again, this is communication. All right. But as soon as I say that, I say the same thing with men. But the only difference, ladies, when you're listening to men, you don't want to just listen to them. You actually want to see them doing said behavior. And that's one of the the differences between men when we watch women and then women, you know, when it comes to men, you know, because with a a guy, you can listen to a woman and what she's saying just a little bit more. Um, And yes, you do still need to watch her behavior. But for a woman, you really need to watch his behavior. You really need to watch his behavior. But for a woman, you know, as long as she's doing certain things, as long as she has a soft way about her. You know, if she says, hey, I really want to move towards family, but she gives me that family energy, I'm probably going to believe her. But if um, she is basically not giving me that and, I, and like we talk about, you know, some guys, it's harder for them to distinguish, you know, the three main types of women, which is the instinct type, the thinking type and the heart type. And again, with the instinct type, she's probably never going to really be bringing up a lot of soft things like romantic things, uh, things like cooking and cleaning and and things like that. Ooh, I love to pamper my man. Ooh, I love to cook for my man. Ooh, I want to do this for my man. Ooh, I want to do that for my man. See, those are things that a heart-based woman will be bringing up. And then a thinking-based woman generally is not going to be openly mobile anyway. She'll try to be, but generally most of them will kind of admit that that's really not their thing. I dated an Indian. That was an interesting was he experience. Musty? No, oh, girl. damn. Girl, I just came back from Dubai Stop. and so many of them were musty. I just had to ask. Well, he was Indian. And I don't want musty. Was, he was sweet. We don't want nothing. Because musty is not good. Oh, girl. Oh, no. No. Yeah, but been, that can be on any of them. Ooh. That's true. That, that, that knows no race. I'm hoping I'm cleaning some of this up. Um, and I cleaned out a lot of the vulgarity um, that's basically being put in it. But again, this is actually, to me, another one of the problems. Um, you know, you have a lot of women that are saying, okay, I want good guys. I want this. I want that. I want this really great guy. But then they have potty mouths. And I know that's really small and really tacky. Um, you know, a lot of women are like, come on, Jay, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I get it. But I'll be honest, when a woman, you know, is just foul in her mouth, it just doesn't work the same way. And I understand that this is, you know, women hanging out with women and just wanting to be relaxed. But how a woman is when she's relaxed is pretty much who she really is. And, you know, again, a lot of women, I think that they don't understand that these little details can still hurt you. Um, You know, it's like when a man is trying to talk to you and then, you know, you're giving him more and more reasons, all these little bitty reasons 
for him not to want to talk, to continue to have this conversation with you. It just kind of puts you in a situation, you know, that's not necessarily the best. It's just kind of like if I ran into, you know, a woman, you know, even if, you know, you ladies cuss, but if I'm out, yo, Emma, yo, but, 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 and, you know, I can't get through two minutes worth of conversation without five and six, you know, curse words dropping out my mouth. I know a lot of women that will walk away from me. I know a lot of women will, that will be like, no, no, you know, I don't want that because they're thinking about their children. The fact that children pick up on cursing, you know, all these types of things. And then what else is that vulgarity actually lean into? It's not just the talking. It's like what else is in my head that actually, you know, puts me in that in that energy. So that's just another thing that I would, you know, encourage, you know, the women that watch me, you know, I'm not saying you can't curse at all, but, you know, just kind of try to pull it back, at least be in control of it and recognize that the average guy might not like that, you know, especially in average everyday conversation. I encourage uh, black women to go there and try, like, taste the rainbow. I mean, I encourage you to taste all the rainbow because you never know what color Skittle is going to work for you. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> We the, he's still alive, so I'm gonna go ahead and play. <laughs> we're the last ones to kind of cross over. It seems like it seems like we're like the, like we die hard, like we try to get that black man, that black family. Yeah. But then everybody else is trying to get to him too, as well. Yes. Everybody, yeah. everybody, yeah. So everybody. They get to the top of the food chain. And it's like such a like a thought mentality that they have right now too. They just yeah. They're, They're willing to accept anything. Anything. Yeah. 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 So. And multiple anythings, because all of them just got multiple. And you're like, you don't date one? No. I, I just lie. wish I had more of a whole spirit. I would have some. I know. Like that. Right. That's true. That's true. That's but weird. I had a father. <laughs> yeah. Not a good one. Damn him. Yes. I wish I could just hold whole life, because I was just getting married. Okay, so let's let's talk about this. Because <laughs> that's actually, I mean, they could have they could have just went into that. Um, this whole spirit. Um, and I love that, a whole spirit. So Will that get you married? <laughs> no, no, that won't get you married. Um, I don't know why she came up with that. Um, you know, I don't know what in her past actually made her believe that that statement is true. Um, now, I'm not to say that women who have actually been promiscuous won't get married. I'm not saying that because it's not necessarily about the woman that happened in the past. That's not what most men are focusing on. They're focusing more on the woman that is in front of them. If she's had a, a hoey past in her early 20s, that really has nothing to do, you know, with her in her, you know, late 20s unless she has collateral damage. No. So if she's coming in with kids, um, if she's coming up with, you know, other problems that won't go away, um, you know, then yes, you know, that could be a problem. But honestly, you know, once you get beyond that, you're really not, especially because a lot of men recognize now, not all, you know, and this is always a debate, but, you know, a lot of men do recognize that, you know, women are sexual creatures. And so they're not going to sit around, many of them, you know, throughout their entire 20s and never, ever, you know, do anything. You know, I wish more of them, you know, would be a little bit more chaste. But, you know, I am just being, you know, realistic. So I do think that a lot of uh, women, you know, they, they I think they can hurt themselves. Don't get me wrong. You know, I've talked about that in the past. But I don't think that just because if a woman is hoeing around that she's going to get a man. Now, I don't believe that. Now, I do believe that many of the women that a lot of people might consider hoes are or I wouldn't even say, you know, to use that word. I would actually to say pick me. Um, because we talk a little bit about pick me's all the time. And I do believe that, you know, pick me energy is very attractive to men that are looking for a good romantic woman. And many of those women will come in and they're looking to cook and clean and just really be the housewife type. And so when those women find a really great guy, those guys kind of lock them up really quick because from a guy's perspective, you know, being out in the world where women have all these demands and, you know, you have to, you know, walk this way and hop this way and do this and do that is it, it creates peace, you know, for the man. And you hear men talking about this all the time. I'm looking for a woman that brings me peace. I'm looking for a woman that brings me peace. So when they run into a woman who's a lot more relaxed, who's willing to work, um, but she's not arguing about anything. She's just more, you know, just kind of relaxing and letting it happen. I think you have a lot more um, you know, men out there that will choose her. But again, that being said, there's still, you always have to deal with the dynamic 
of, you know, women in high position society that, that are pushing, pushing, pushing those women who are watch, walking in what we would consider masculine energy. Those women many times are looking for a man to bring them peace. And see, that is when they end up with a lot of guys that don't do as much, you know, in the world. They tend to do more in the house. And it's kind of like I say, that reverse type scenario. It was amazing. He took me fishing. Uh, we we spend a lot of time together. Um, he was in my life. He taught me algebra. So I wish it was dumb. <laughs> I don't even need to know math to get it. So I'm just like so mad that he taught me math. Because, because you know, real. black men don't like it when you know math. They're like, oh, you think you know numbers? You're like, like two plus two is four. He like, for real? Like, <laughs> again, I know they're joking around, but again, this leads to that whole thing where I'm always talk, telling you guys about the stereotype and how a lot of black women will pass over really great black men to get to the stereotypical black men. And a lot of nerdy black men don't get the chance to talk to black women because a lot of black women will overlook them. And she's sitting there laughing about it. But the truth is, more than likely, she's probably passed over a lot of nerdy black men that she just didn't think were black man enough. But she's able to deal with that from another race of man. That's why I say a lot of times when black women go into other races, what I see is that they're actually picking the same type of guy that I know exists within the black community. But again, I'm not saying that you can't date other races, but it's like they they're you know like i say they're jumping over them and like i say i and i've tried to be honest with you guys it's like my energy is definitely instinct based but it's like i've told you before in certain videos there are times when i lean more towards heart based and there's time when i lean more towards thinking based all right so when i am not walking in instinct based i'll be honest with you black women tend not to give me a lot of a lot of love when I walk into the heart-based energy, which is the energy that most men, period, I don't care what race they are, tend to have the hardest time. So that's when you're giving gifts. That's when you are being what a lot of men would consider a simp. But it's like you're just really just pouring out your love, um, you know, or your, the fact that you care or the fact that you're just that type of person that's willing to give. A lot of black women take advantage of you. Um, they don't really respect you. And it really causes a problem. Now, I'm not saying all black women. I'm just saying black women in general. And then again, when a lot of black men are walking in intellectual energy, you know, thinking energy, which now they're they're spitting out facts and stuff like that and a lot of information. And like she said, teaching people math um, again, they get overlooked. And see, it's like I've told you guys before, how I talk right now is how I talk all the time. You know, I don't get with a woman and then I'm like, hey, yeah, yeah. How you doing, girl? You so pretty. Blah, blah, blah. I do a little bit of that. But most of it is like intellectual conversation. So if we can't get into intellectual conversation. And if she can't keep up, then it's no way in the world we're going to be able to talk because that's not, you know, who I am, you know, most of the time. We love black men. We love we, black we men. We do. But we must see. That love us. <laughs> Oh, oh, Hello. Mm -hmm. we're not bitter, right? We're no. not bitter. No, no, just honest. Just honest. Keep hope alive, though. Hey, yes. it can hope happen. It Spring's will happen. eternal, honey. It's I mean, happen. just like you could maybe win the lottery, but Dang. I guess it could happen. Dang. The right. is like that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> also, it's it's really interesting how they constantly are poking fun at you know at the problems of it instead of just trying to come up with more solutions. It's like they keep poking the fun at it. And I want to make sure I, I say this because this is one of the problems when I talk about media and about what media is actually doing to you. So even though she's saying, oh, well, let's keep hope alive. Let's do this. Let's be positive. But, you know, you can win the lottery and it might not work out, you know, because, you know, the chance you win the lottery is like one in a million. You see what I'm saying? You, see, I don't want to try to point this stuff out to you guys because I want to show you how if you're looking at this stuff, if this is what feeds you. They're feeding you basically things that will kill you. And th they themselves are always going to have a hard time because a lot of these women are in high places. OK, in high places, I've always told, you know, try to say uber successful black women. That's why I don't like to say successful, because they're successful. Try to group all the black women in. But uber successful women, black women, white women, Asian women, it doesn't matter, are always going to have a hard time. Because women in general, like I've said before, they generally don't talk to men that, you know, are not on what they consider their level or even close 
to their level. According to the General uh, Social Survey, over 51% of young Americans said they don't have a steady romantic partner. Hmm. Are you surprised and have relationships become more taboo? Taboo, the end of the world, they don't exist. Like people don't believe in relationships at all. And I love being in a relationship and being with one person and because who got energy to do all that? We got to work, we got to make money, we got to be cute, we got to get our hair done. Like all the time, you got so much stuff to do. Yeah. How you need to juggle multiple people? That we're going to switch up on them mm -hmm. and become like not be, the, not be their girlfriend. Because when you're the girlfriend, you're sexy, you're fun. But are we full of shit? When we're girlfriends are Absolutely. we being, we're being fake we're then, not, right? We're, still, we're, not, we're not showing our true self. Okay. Because the Ooh. thing about life is uh, when, you, when you get the goal, right, to you say, okay, I want to be an actress. You go out here to L.A., you get all these headshots done, you put all the work in, you just do the work. Mm -hmm. Then once you start to get the jobs, it's like, hmm, okay, yeah, you may show up late to work now. Mm -hmm. you, but in the beginning, you were going to be on time. And that's how it is re re relative to relationships, is that you, it's a goal there. A goal is marriage. I want this family. I want this man. I, this is what I want for my life. And once you get that goal, we all get lazy. Again, we have to talk about different types of women. Like one of the things that I'm always talking about is I'm talking about women who walk in girlfriend energy and women who walk in wife energy. And I say the same thing for about men. There are men who walk in boyfriend energy and there are men out here who are walking in husband energy. And the main reason why you can tell the difference is it's just the way in which they will take care of you. All right. So a lot of women who walk in, one, in, in wife energy, they'll end up usually with a lot of lazy dudes. And that's really why they're frustrated. And it's the same thing with a lot of guys. A lot of men will actually marry women, you know, because I've talked about a woman will marry her placeholder man. All right. She will marry a, her placeholder man. So for the men out there watching, you have to watch that because you need to make sure that, you know, she really loves you, that she is infatuated with you, that when she goes to bed at night, she's having fantasy and dreams about you, that she wants to see you naked, that she wants to, you know, just be in every, you know, do everything, be everything. I mean, seriously, you really have to think that way, because if she's not doing that, then more than likely you're in a placeholder position as a man. And remember, she will marry you. But uh, one of the things that, you know, I think it, uh, they're not, again, really going into is just the fact that, these are goal-driven women, okay? They're instinct-based. Instinct-based people are goal-driven. Again, I'm instinct-based. I'm goal-driven. <laughs> um, so it, it's, it's it, that, and even what she just said, oh, you know, we do this, we do this, we do all this hard work, and then we finally get there, and now we can relax. And see, that is how instinct-based people think. That's how they run their whole lives. That, that's what actually keeps us going. Because the mindset is, if I work really, really hard, I'll accomplish my goals. And then for the rest of my life, I can relax. And that is that is actually the lie that a lot of instinct driven people actually believe. And it's actually, believe it or not, it's in the Bible. Um, Jesus actually has a parable where he talks about it, where he talks about how this man, you know, he's doing really well. He has all this, you know, he's like a farmer. He's, you know, he has all this grain or whatever. And then he's like, man, I'm doing so well. You know what? I'm going to tear down my my um, my grain thing or whatever, you know, my silo, and I'm going to build a bigger one. And then I'm going to tell myself, self, I don't have to work anymore. I can basically take take it easy from now on. And what's interesting about that is when he did that, God told him that he was wicked. And that, in fact, he was never going to enjoy um, the fruit of his labor and that he was going to die that night. And then all of the fruit of his labor was going to pass to someone else. So what you see here and understand from God is that there's a constant work, a constant work. Even when, you know, you're dealing with like the Israelites and they were walking around, you know, for 40 years in the wilderness, God fed them every day, but he only fed them enough food for that day. He never allowed them to store it except on, you know, for the Sabbath. But beyond that, he never allowed them to store food. So there is a principle with God that he wants you to work every day. He wants you to strive every day. You cannot ever really take a break. It's actually one of the uh, reasons why I'll actually be honest with you. I know I'm not talking necessarily to older people per se on this channel, but I don't encourage people to retire. I encourage you to retire out of your nine to five job that you really didn't like and you were just doing it to pay the bills. But I do not encourage you just to sit around the house and watch TV. That is a recipe for death. 
All right. You need interaction. You need people and you need a purpose to get up every day in order to accomplish. But for sake of time, I'm going to end it right around here. But I did want to say, you know, when people, you know, because the main point of this video is what is causing chronic single status. And they were talking about even with the men, you know, going into the fact that over 51 percent of men now are basically saying they would rather stay single. And again, I think, you know, you have to look at it from the benefits of what is it in it for the man. And I think a lot of people have talked about this, you know, throughout the YouTube uh, spaces. And I don't think a lot of women really see it from the man's point of view. Most men, like I've said before, make more money than women. OK, no matter what you believe. OK, no matter what lies that the media is telling you, on average, the average man makes more money than the average woman. So that you have to say that. And remember, when you're dealing with women like these, these are uber successful women, not successful women, uber successful women. Successful women get married every day. All they have to do is find, you know, good men. And like I say, I recognize that most of you are just simply successful. So you will find a man if you actually know where to look, know what to look for and keep yourself open to talk to men. All right. So most of these women, that is their problem is really not a big deal. I've done a million videos on it. Now, why would men not want to get married? Again, you're dealing with men that on average, they're making more money. And men on average don't spend money on anything that they believe is not adding to their life directly. So it is not uncommon. And some of you ladies probably already know this. It is not uncommon to go into a man's house slash apartment and he have a sofa a full refrigerator, a TV, a TV stand, you know, a whole lot of little TV stands where he, you know, eats on. And that's pretty much it. He's got no wall decor. You know, he's got, he's got no extra stuff. You know, he puts his cup on the ground on a TV tray. I mean, that is his life. All right. And, you know, his refrigerator is full of soda and beer or whatever it is. And he's living a life, right? There's no comfort really in his place. It's just, it's just a place. And the reason why is because men are very simplistic that way. It's the same thing I've constantly saying, you know, like here in Atlanta, like one of the main ways that a lot of women, you know, fail when it comes to dating is that a lot of women really love to go to really nice restaurants, but really nice restaurants cost a lot of money. And I know, like I said, from my perspective, there are some restaurants I'm not even going to lie. You know, they've, I've seen pictures of them and, you know, Instagrams of them and stuff like that. And I'm like, man, I would like to go there. But then I look at how much it costs and it's like $100. And I'm like $100 for an hour and some food just so I can look at some fancy decorations. But you'll have, I mean, the, the place will be packed. It'll have reservations, you know, for weeks. And it's usually women trying to get in there. That and people doing anniversaries. But the average man, he don't want to go in there. He doesn't understand what he's spending his money on. You know, for me, spending a hundred dollars for a plate of food that only that doesn't taste any better than me going down to Applebee's or Chili's or, you know, um, Cheesecake Factory. It, it really it kind of boggles my mind and it and it, it, it doesn't work well. It, it just doesn't work well. And so my brain is kind of like. <coughs> and it's, it's about to explode. <laughs> But, you know, for a lot of women, they're like, oh, yes, the ambiance. And, oh, you know, I had my wine and it was so great and blah, blah, blah. And then you go to their homes and their homes are very decorated and all these other kind of stuff. So men are able to take that extra money and they're able to explode it. Not only do they make more money, but they generally have more leftover. They generally aren't as in, in as much debt because they don't buy as much stuff. OK, men aren't as quick, you know, to buy an expensive car. Men are will take that money in and invest it a lot quicker. And then you have court systems that will lean towards women. They still lean towards women even to to this day. And a lot of them are not fair even about the situation of being in the home, you know. And so it, it, it creates this dynamic where for a lot of men, they're just kind of like, well, you know, I wouldn't mind being with somebody, but it's not worth it to me. I'm not seeing the benefit of it. And then when you have so many women that are basically taking men to court 
for no reason. They're trying to get all this extra child support for no reason. They're trying, they even are trying to strategize on Instagram and TikTok on telling women how you can basically live for free by having babies. This is a culture we live in. And so it, it takes a lot for a man to basically say, okay, I'm going to give you my life. Cause that's pretty much what he's doing. He's giving you his life. And what is he getting in return? you know, for said thing. And so that's the thing that, you know, I, I really want women to kind of understand that side of it. Now, from a man's perspective, um, like I've told you all before, and I actually did it. And I think about a, a video a couple of weeks ago, or whatever, I was talking about how a, a woman, if you get a good woman, if you get a good woman, she will explode everything in your life. I mean, and when I mean explode, I'm talking about in a good way. Um, you'll get your finances will turn over faster. Everything in your life will be faster and better. And then you can really start to work towards generational wealth. But it's all about finding that really great woman. And I will always believe that really great women are still here in America. But it's more about her attitude toward things. And a lot of the times, like I've said before, heart based women and, and uh, thinking based women Many of them don't have the same issues as instinct based women do. And it's really just because instinct based women just unless they're humble and really sold out to a higher power, um, a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them can really lean toward their own success, their own benefit, their own, you know, trying to get to a certain place instead of believing there's a greater good that I'm doing here and that my life is worth a greater good. If that makes sense, it's almost like for, for, you know, the Christians out there, if God, you know, because there was one person in the Bible that God actually told to marry somebody. And um, this particular I don't know the guy's name off the top of my head, but he basically, you know, God told him to marry a prostitute because it was supposed to be symbolic of, you know, God's relationship with Israel. And when you start to look at that particular relationship in that particular situation, that was a very uncomfortable place. But. For all the Christians out there, if God asked you or told you and said, hey, I want you to marry a prostitute or for the women, I want you to marry a homeless man. Would you do it? You know, and see, that's that whole thing about giving your life away, giving your life away to God, you know, being so um, sold out to him that you're willing to give it all up. And this is another reason why I'm, I'm not a fan, honestly, of the of the of the decline away from Christ. Because the further we get away from God, the more these types of problems show up. And I don't think a lot of people are really paying attention to that. Now, I'll admit there have been a lot of people that have been very dogmatic about how they've dealt with Christianity. But Christianity really doesn't work in a dogmatic way. There are rules and regulations that you're supposed to follow. And I agree. But then there's also God's grace as well. And I truly believe that God sits in the middle of both. He is not on one side or the other. If you go to grace filled churches, people get away with everything. Every single person gets away with everything and they put things in place to take care of the people that get away with everything. But then if you go to, um, you know, a very dogmatic church, everybody's afraid of everything. And they're afraid to live life because they're so afraid. OK, is this little thing going to you know, please God or is it going to offend God? So God allows us to make mistakes. At least my belief is that God allows us to make mistakes, but he's asking us uh, or, you know, really compelling us not to make that many of them, especially when he's already brought us through and taught us that you don't need to do said thing. Hope this helped. Please like, please subscribe. And I'm going to see you all in the very next video.